All right. Well, thank you all for being here. This is a, a public meeting and hopefully a discussion ar around the Green Crescent Trail and just, just really some updates. There's been a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes and some details, a lot of work from volunteers like our group, the Friends of the Green Crescent Trail, but also local community members. Representative Carter's here tonight. He's been working hard for us um, at the state level. And so just a lot of details. And I, uh, my goal is just to update you as much as possible on some of the current projects. And also we're going to start with the big picture. Uh, just if you've, a lot of you are going to be familiar with this, maybe you've already heard some of it, but some of the details, my goal is just to give you uh, the, the latest and then we always need support. So if you have ideas, you have questions, you have suggestions, um, I'm all ears and we have another, well, we'll have probably a couple other members, but one of our other members of the Friends of the Green Crescent Board, Kathy Robins, Robinson's here. Another volunteer, Eunice Lamacher, is here as well. So hopefully they can help me out with questions too if they do come up. So I'm going to share my screen and get started here. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to start with the big picture. I'm going to get in the weeds and talk about some of the specific projects, but I always like to go with a big picture of what our group, the Friends of the Green Crescent Trail, is trying to do. We're a, we're a nonprofit. We started, we're started in 2015. Local community members started it. We still run it. Nobody's paid anything by this. This is 100% volunteers for now. We hope to eventually get maybe some staff to help us out. But our goal and our vision of our, of our group is to have the greater Clemson area. So when I say Clemson, this is including Pendleton, Central, hopefully other communities nearby, to be a an to have an alternative transportation network. So this isn't replacing cars. This isn't saying roads are going away. This is just saying we have a lot of great places in our community. And can it make can we make it easier to get around walking, whether that's just walking a quarter mile to the park, or whether that's biking to school or to work, or making longer trips like that? So it's just this idea of an alternative transportation network. That's what we're trying to build. And really, this is the you know, why are we doing this? This is the intersection. I'm gonna uh, mute everybody real quick. Just to, let's see here. A little background noise going on. Um, but th th this is really an intersection, maybe of a, re of a recreational project and a transportation project. So you might have you heard of Swamp Rabbit Trail, you heard of the Doodle Trail. They began very much as recreational trail projects, which this is going to be as well, where you get out, you run, you jog, you walk your dog, you ride a bike. And so this is the Green Crescent Trail is definitely that. But I think even more so than those other projects, this is a, a transportation project too. So this is helping people, particularly with the, our community growing, things changing. Can we build a skeleton of a transportation network that doesn't only require you to get in the car? Maybe take away a couple of your trips every day. If you want to walk somewhere to your local community, to the downtown, to your church, maybe you can take a trip or two where you walk or you take a bike. And especially with students and people going to university, that's definitely something that's possible. And what are all the benefits? This is a public health benefit, obviously, people getting out moving, traffic mitigation, quality of life. This is a sustainability project. So the way we develop, can we do it more sustainably instead of just creating more pollution, taking away more green space? Um, equity is, as well, making it more equitable for people who can't always drive somewhere or maybe can't do it from a medical reason, making it equitable for them to be able to get around our community. And then also recruitment and economics. This is definitely played out in Greenville and Traveler's Rest. You, if you've ever been to, seen it before and after of Traveler's Rest, the small community on the other end of the Swamp Rabbit Trail, look at it before and see how many businesses now, how many small businesses, local businesses are thriving now because of the Swamp Rabbit. So there's, I think all of these, this is one reason as a volunteer, I've been so excited about it, is there are just few projects that hit so many different community benefits. That's, and that's why we're excited about it. All right, so this jumble of rectangles here, I'm gonna zoom in on maps, so don't worry if this looks confusing. But I just wanted to give you kind of a big picture. And the metaphor I'm going to use for this tonight is this is a really a puzzle. This is for all the volunteers who've been working on this since 2015. This has not been an easy puzzle. This has been one of those puzzles where you put like 10,000 pieces on the table during Christmas dinner and you're trying to put all the pieces together. And we, we've, I think we, in the last couple of years, we finally realized like which puzzle pieces do we need to turn over first? We found a couple of corner pieces and a couple of like those end pieces, but there's a lot of pieces that are going to come in the future as well. But this is the guide that I'm kind of in my own mind of trying to think about what this big thing called the Green Crescent Trail could be, like big picture vision. So each of these little rectangles that I have here, these are essentially corridors. And you can think about them as connecting certain locations in town. I'm going to let a few people in who are waiting on us here. So if you look at like this, this big uh, north-south rectangle here, this is basically going from downtown Clemson to the north all the way to 12 Mile Beach 
to the experimental forest. So can we connect? Like if you could you park in downtown, take a bike ride to 12 Mile Beach or take a bike ride to the experimental forest and come back. That's a that's a big picture vision. That's not in the next few years, but that's that's how this thing started was that idea. Could we get from the community or downtown area to some of our green spaces, which is one of our most important resources in the area? And so that that's one corridor there, the Highway 133, College Avenue corridor. This other corridor here that I'm moving my mouse on, I hope you can see that, maybe not, is the um, Highway 93 corridor connecting Central back to Clemson, the city of Clemson, all the way back to Clemson University and also Southern Wesleyan University on one end. So that's like a university to university connection and a town to town connection. And Highway 93 is a really important you know, develop, uh, corridor for the future of what's gonna happen with development and, and what's traffic gonna be like. So that's another corridor, College Avenue, oops, uh, Highway 93. This one here that's kind of parallel to Highway 93, this is the 18 Mile Creek corridor. And I'm gonna zoom in on a couple projects here a little bit later, but this is essentially going from Patrick Square to Nettles Park. And if you've been to 18 Mile Creek, that's the, that's the kind of what we're talking, going along 18 Mile Creek. This would be your true greenway, like your place where you go out and you're under trees and you're along a river and you're kind of getting out in nature right close by. And, and we're trying to go from parks to parks, so from Nettles Park to Ashley Deering Park, and for one example. But then the future, kind of big picture, can we go all the way to the future Packlet Millican uh, Master Plan development? They have the Green Crescent Trail built into that development as well. And then maybe even going all the way to Old Stone Church Road, Dawson Park, and kind of continuing on to uh, Lake Hartwell eventually with Clemson University. So that's kind of going that, that direction. So 18 Mile Creek Corridor, Highway 93 Corridor, uh, College Avenue and, High, and Highway 133. And then these two here kind of go in perpendicular. One is the Pendleton Road corridor. So going from Clemson to Pendleton. And we haven't made as much progress on that as we is maybe some of the others, but that's definitely an important one trying to connect the village green of Pendleton back to a lot of the residential areas, the parks, but also back to Clemson, city of Clemson and to Clemson University. And then finally here, this one is the Berkeley, Berkeley Drive Gateway uh, corridor, which I'm going to focus on that one for the phase one tonight and talk to you about some of the kind of first project we're working on in Clemson. But this connects Ashley Deering Park up to Clemson Elementary School, Clemson Park, and then back around through some neighborhoods at Gateway Park. So I'll, I'll definitely get into more details. These other two blue ones I've added on, and this is kind of showing you how these puzzle pieces are changing over time. But we've had good conversations with Oconee County uh, members of uh, one member of the or a couple members of the uh, Oconee County Council, but also just private individuals, community members in these areas, talking about making these types of connections between Oconee County and Clemson. And there's going to be some regional transportation studies going on, bigger than just the Green Crescent Trail. But how do we look at our whole region, not just as the city of Clemson or the town of Central or Seneca, but looking at it as in a regional transportation uh, uh, perspective? And so these kind of connections here, going from the campus to the Hartwell Village where the Aldi is and a lot of the new apartments are going in in Oconee County, can we make sure that connection happens from a pedestrian bicycle point of view as well? So that's an important one. And a lot of that's on university land. So if you look at the master plan for the university, there are some plans for that. But from our standpoint as a, as a grassroots community advocacy group, can we make sure to, to keep those at the top of the list, to try to make sure those are, that the people in the university decision makers know that's also a community important uh, project from the community perspective. And then this other one here, if you've ever dri driven out West Cherry Road lately or anytime in the last five or 10 years, there's a lot of student apartments there and there's gonna be even more in Oconee County, but also other, uh, other retire retiree kind of focused developments. Other, there's the uh, marina out there on Lake Hartwell. And so this whole West Cherry corridor is another opportunity. So a little bit more difficult. There's you know, crossing Lake Hartwell in both of these cases. So a little bit more expensive, there's bridges involved. But that's another connection that is, we just want to make sure we're keeping that in our in the forefront of our minds and that can we just look for opportunities, whether it's funding opportunities or collaboration opportunities with Oconee County. And so this is why I'm kind of presenting this big picture map just to show you a big picture of this puzzle. We hope by 2030 to make some progress on these corridors. You can see those green lines kind of in the background. We have just a rough plan to say, here's if we had a certain amount of funding. Here's what we could try to implement. We could connect Central and Clemson. We could connect Pendleton and Clemson. We could make some headway on the downtown College Avenue corridor. And then we could connect a lot of the 18 Mile Creek and some of the other things in between. So that's a big picture. If y'all have any comments or questions on that, 
before I dig into the kind of zoom in on some stuff, feel free to let me know. Y'all can unmute yourself or chat or ask me a question. Chad, whatever we do, we got to make sure we get Max drive in in there, I think. So yeah. I got that. 100% agree. That's that's like the core right here, the middle of the Pendleton Drive corridor. It's got to be Max. Very good. Agree 100% on that one. Any other thoughts or comments on that? I mean, the a lot of the conversations I've had with people out in the community, it's been like, what, you know, where is this? What, what is this? And it's, that's, that puzzle metaphor to me is important because this is not swamp rabbit where you had this set, you know, one railway that's going some way, somewhere. It's more this picture. It's this picture of the network of the community. And we're going to be piecing it together piece by piece. But this big picture of what it could be is, is really important to keep in mind. All right. Not seeing any other ones. So I'll just keep on scrolling here. And so this is, sort of a kind of capturing, trying to capture what we're looking for for this 2030 plan is about 25 and a half miles of, of improvements of, of the, some of, a lot of this will be off the road, kind of swamp rabbit trail type stuff off the road, but then also sometimes just protecting bike lanes. Highway 93 in particular has bike lanes technically. Um, if you are somebody who rides a bike there, it's, it's super dangerous. It's uh, difficult to get on there. There's not much space. And so it's not, it's not truly a bike lane for a lot of users. It's just the most brave users who you know, are willing to, to try it out will use it. But we want to improve bike lanes. We want to have off-road paths. And in some cases, just making some connections on street and with sidewalks. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that. All right, so let's get into current projects. So the, the first one, I'm going to start small but significant. This is one that our board thought was important and that we've been kind of working on lately is to try to just improve, uh, you do what's called a walk your city project. So this is bad about it uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, where they were using just really low cost signs to do an experiment, a pilot project, essentially, to try to make to show people how easy it is to walk around your community using some of the existing infrastructure we already have. And so we've got eight, about eight signs, I believe, I'm trying to remember how many I put up recently, but we have eight signs mainly in downtown Clemson right now. Hopefully we can do more soon. These are about $10, $15 for these kind of temporary signs we're putting up. But the goal is to encourage walking, get people out walking on our existing locations to highlight where we have sidewalks already and show, hey, here's a route you can get to downtown, for example, or here's a route to get to the park from downtown. It's only a 10 minute walk and then feature some of our existing spaces. So and we started with downtown because we have business owners who've been struggling with COVID and getting people downtown, particularly community members. And also we have a, a lake and a park right there that it's just amazing how close Abernathy Park and Gateway and the Shanklin Sands green space are to the downtown and how few students in particular who just show up there, or just started school there, don't really know where some of these resources are. So we just thought it'd be a low cost and quick experiment. That maybe we can expand and maybe we can make permanent um, through the city. Um, as a kind of a greater community wayfinding system for pedestrians and bicyclists. So here's just a couple pictures of what, what this looks like recently. So rather than saying this is uh, you know a mile and a half walk, which might make sense if you're you know driving a car or something, it's just saying, hey, this is 10 minutes this way. Go this way. And there's a there's a little code you can put, you can take a picture of that code on the sign and it'll give you the Google map. So you can just it can tell you where you're going if you're walking down that way. Um, we also, this is down next to JC, uh, JC Park uh, and the, uh, the, cat, the cat, there's a cat bus stop right here. Saying it, so going back towards downtown, the idea might be say, hey, if you're down here and you didn't realize you could just take a walk instead of having to go park up there, you could just park down here and walk six, six minutes up the street to, to food, dining, shopping. Or you could walk five minutes this way to a lakefront park. We did a, cl a cleanup earlier last year in Gateway in uh, Abernathy Park. Where we picked up a lot of trash and we had a lot of students show up. And the, the inspiration for me was talking to some of those students and, and they were realizing and they were saying, we didn't even know Abernathy Park was here. Like they were picking up trash there and, and didn't know all of these things were here. So that was part of the, the motivation for this. So here's another sign for the Shanklin Sam's green space downtown. All right, so that's, that's the first one. Any comments, thoughts, questions on that one? Hopefully we can do more with that. We've had somebody reach out to us from Six Mile, just a community member saying that in Six Mile, it was in the newspaper a week ago. Um, we'd love to do it in more places, but uh, we, we, need, we can use some help. So this is one of those projects, help us uh, go buy a few signs, put a few signs up. It's really simple. I can show you how to do it, but this is, a, this is a, something we're working on. Jack, quick question. What is Shanklin Sam's that you or you're referring to? Okay, uh, it's a little green space downtown. Let me show you where it is. 
See, that proves our point right there, Andy. Um, if you're downtown and you see there's Sloan Street, North Clemson Avenue, Judge Keller's, that's the best location. Just take a right right there. And it's that green space about, you know, half a mile, quarter mile right here uh, from downtown. Shakeland's is there's a, little, a cool little nature trail that was uh, we helped build, but the, the Boy Scouts uh, had an Eagle Scout project last year and they they kind of blazed the trail there and marked all okay. the plants. So it's yeah. a neat place if you're ever and there's a good picnic spot there too if you have any food downtown you can just take it over there and kind of relax and eat outside all right i think there was see if there's anything else all right meg says that's a great idea thanks meg all right so moving on that's that's something we want to expand and do a little bit more of um so i want to talk about the the phase one in Clemson. So this is where the Gateway Park to Clemson Park to Berkeley Drive kind of a connection. And I'll refer to it as the Clemson phase one, because this was the first kind of big Green Crescent Trail project in the city of Clemson that uh, we were helping to work on. When this is done, it'll be about a mile and a half of new kind of miles of trail. Uh, there, there's been funding allocated from the city of Clemson for the about 650,000 was the budget for the main trail in Clemson. Um, 125,000 for a uh, Clemson Park loop, which I'll show you some pictures of. And then a pump track has been a kind of a newer puzzle piece that came in a little bit later, but it will be a, 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 basically an amenity inside of Clemson Park, which we hope is also going to get some funding to improve uh, other aspects of that park. But let me explain a couple of what, what, the, what these are. So there's, there's the trail, there's a the Clemson Park loop and pump track. So kind of three components of this that I want to go over. Um, but the important part that I'm going to mention on each one of these phases is what do they connect? That's what we're, our, our slogan is go connect. So what are we connecting here? We're connecting the pedestrian bridge at Clemson Elementary. That was one of the most important projects in the city of Clemson over the last 10 years from a pedestrian standpoint. It's opened up a lot of the southern part of Berkeley Drive to Clemson Park, Country Walk, all the residential areas on that side. Um, so that's one piece that's going to connect there. Clemson Park is going to kind of be a trailhead uh, so people can park and get on there. Gateway Park is going to be eventually a trailhead on the other side. And I'll show you where that is on Highway 93. And then of course, there's a lot of churches and neighborhoods in between. So these are the connections that this is making. In the future, it's not gonna happen necessarily in this phase, but we, we, our goal is to also connect to Clemson University, which I'll show you. Uh, there's some plans from the university to make that connection. And then also as soon as possible to the art center into the Clemson Af area African-American Museum, if we can to make this kind of a cultural kind of connection trail as well. Let me, uh, I'm going to go back to my map here because that's going to be easier than, than showing you um, just a, a static map there. So I'm going to zoom in on some components of this phase one. So I'm going to start over here. Here's Clemson Elementary. So I'm circling that with my mouse there. The pedestrian bridge going across Highway 23 is here. So that's already in place. My kids and I walk that just about every morning or bike it. Um, the first part of this phase one is going to start right at Berkeley Drive. And Dad, we are not seeing that. We're still seeing Shank and Sims. Oh, thank you. All right. Let's try it again. What about that? Is that showing up now? Yes. yes. I was just talking and talking with no map. <laughs> That's not good. All right. So let's start over. Here's Clipson Elementary. And we got the pedestrian bridge. And the first component of this new phase one is gonna start right at the intersection of Berkeley Drive and Frontage Road. So right here, and I'm gonna show you some zoom ins on some engineering plans of what that's gonna look like. But basically where my mouse is right here on this little section on Frontage Road is gonna be an improved sidewalk. Right now there's a sidewalk and kind of a, a weird no man's land of like sort of like a bike lane, sort of not. There's space basically beside the road and that's gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna build an expanded widened sidewalk there with a curb. So that's this first piece. The second piece is gonna be a widened road on Clemson Park. So you take a left here and go into Clemson Park. Right now it's about 30 feet wide, I believe, maybe 25 feet uh, or so. And so we're, we're having to ask for an easement from the, from the apartment owner here. That's one of the pieces I'm gonna tell you more details about, but we need about 10 feet for the ro extra uh, road width just to widen the asphalt and then put a protected, you know, just some barrier between where the cars will go and where a bike lane, walking lane will go along the side of the road there. All right, then we got Clipson Park. 
And if, and if y'all been down to Clemson Park, there's the first component of this that was funded last year and built this last year was the, the loop trail inside of Clemson Park. And then that's going to connect to uh, an extension of the, of the continuation of the Green Crescent Trail behind the, the, the gardens, the community gardens there. And then along, this is Clemson, this is Clemson Methodist Church property. And so they would have to still give us an easement to do that, which we're all kind of actively working on. The city of Clemson is actively working on. And then it would go all the way to Frontage Road. And this, this is another piece where we had to work with the DOT. The South Carolina DOT is, controls this road, Frontage Road right now. Mm -hmm. And so we want to build a basically a protected walking bike lane here on Frontage Road, which eventually, if this is this has been uh, preliminary approved by the South Carolina DOT. We might be able to do this on the entire frontage road eventually and to make it, because there's really wide lanes there, like 15 or 16 feet wide <laughs> for, for a pretty relatively slow, should be a slow road, but it's not always. So can we reduce the lane size, use that extra lane size for biking and walking lanes? And we're going to do just a little experiment there basically on that piece of it. All right, we're keep continuing on. We're going left here on Ripple View Drive. And this is the third easement we're having to get on this project. This is actually uh, East Clemson Baptist Church. We're requesting an easement from them to have basically a piece uh, right here by these oak trees beside the road between their parking spots and these oak trees that have an, uh, a 10 foot or 12 foot wide path. I believe it's a 10 foot wide path in that, in that area to connect Frontage Road over to Ripple View Drive. And I'm going to show you some images of Ripple View, but the, essentially what you got here, when you get inside the neighborhood, this is a, a neighborhood street. So Ripple View Drive and Brook Street. So this wouldn't be a sidewalk or a new path along the side of the road. This would be using a really a lower volume street and just using the existing road that we already have and putting some signage, putting some markings on the road to show that there's multiple users here. But the idea here is to hopefully save some costs, but also use something, a place where people are already walking, people are already biking, but just making it more visible, noticeable place that people are supposed to do that there and share that with, with people who are driving as well. And then it ends at Gateway Park. So let me show you some pictures here because I think that'll, that'll make this all a little bit uh, more understandable, what, we're, what I'm talking about. So is that, are y'all seeing my screen now? I'm a little nervous now that it's not switching over. All right, so I'm going to show you. This is the this is the loop trail. So if you haven't been out there, this is when they were constructing it. When was that? Earlier, uh, maybe earlier this year. Um, so that's a, about a quarter mile loop. And the idea is that you know, this is a wider part of the trail, but then as you go around Clemson Park back to the shelter there, it, it kind of narrows down. But this will be, they're called the fast track. So this is when you're going through the park, you'll can see almost like the, you know, the, the biking, walking pathway highway that goes through this park. And then it continues on around behind the Methodist Church. Um, just a couple of comments on that loop trail. So it's already been funded and built. The funding came from the South Carolina Recreational Trails Grant. So this is a program that we hope to apply for every year. It's about, it was a $100,000 grant. And then the city of Clemson funded the balance of that with a, the hospitality tax and the accommodations tax. And there's still some drainage work that has to be done there. If you go to the bottom mm -hmm. of that loop, there's a bunch of mud <laughs> over the trail. And the city engineering department had a separate bid to do, some, to, to do that drainage work so that the, the water is draining correctly at the bottom of the hill. So in case you've seen that, that's just a comment on, on the loop trail. So the pump track, so the, the, as far as I know, this is my understanding from the city staff that this has been funded as well, then about 90% of it would be about 100 to $150,000 improvement to the park. And I think 90% of it would be from the city of Clemson. Duke Energy did give us a grant that we applied for a year ago, a $10,000 grant to help build this pump track. And my understanding as well from talking to staff recently is they're supposed to be getting some construction bids from some trail building companies ASAP, like might've already happened. I'm not sure what, what's happening with that, but that's, that's the idea. And this is probably a fancy, might be a little fancier than what we're looking at, but this is the idea of what a pump track is. If you haven't seen it before, you could probably do one of these for less, uh, less cost than that, but in order to have a more durable surface and lower maintenance over the long run, this is the kind of, I think we're going for here is to have some kind of harder surface, durable surface. But then the idea is that for, it could be young kids, it could be just new bike riders, it could be uh, anybody who really wants to use it, but it's just got pretty kind of smooth curves and then little you know ups and downs. And you can just go around and around and learn, either learn to ride your bike, learn to, or have some kind of improve your skills, and just have, have fun going in a, in a small area 
but it's, it's, it's actually a lot of fun to ride on if you've never done one. Um, so this is, there's one actually in central that um, at the Southern Wesleyan uh, mountain bike trail. If you've never seen what a pump track looks like, you can go over there and check that out. But this will be one a little bit more oriented towards kind of a beginner audience, I believe is the, is the idea, although we hadn't seen the final designs on anything, but something like this is what we would have inside of Clemson Park, maybe a little smaller. All right, so then the final piece of this phase one is the main trail itself that I was going over on the map. Mm -hmm. So the, the city of Clemson in 2019 allocated some, some money for this. This is, uh, I saw Representative Carter's on the call as well. This is one of the low hanging fruit, uh, shovel ready type projects. We got to get a couple easements still, and the city's working on that. But this is the kind of thing that we is ready to go. And so we're hoping you know, with a combination of the city money, then also some of the, the South Carolina General Assembly allocated $200,000 this year in their budget to go towards Green Crescent Trail projects. So our hope from our, our board would be to use some of that in, in this, this project and then some of it in Central as well. Um, South Carolina DOT has given some preliminary approval for this project, but the, the, the final piece that we've been waiting on for probably several months now is easements to, to get final easements that they can be recorded and the city can go out to bid and try to start doing construction on this. So I'll show you a couple cross sections here of what these easements look like, because if you're curious, so you'll know all the details. Um, this is the frontage road, so the where the pedestrian bridge is here at the bottom of the screen. So if you're on uh, Berkeley Drive, and then this is frontage road going kind of up and down on, on the street. So this just shows what that new sidewalk path would look like, extended widened sidewalk. And then up at the top of the screen, you see Clemson Park Road. This is Clemson Park Road. So this is that easement we have to get from, um, from the apartment owner there. And we've gotten a verbal, agree verbal agreement to do that so far. Um, and then, but we've got to get that, we've got to get that in writing. So I think there was some survey work and some legal work that the city attorney was going through to get that done. This is the, pro the part of the property that goes behind the Methodist church. So I don't know, these are difficult maps to see. My, you might have, I'm gonna record this if y'all wanna go back and zoom in or look at this. I'm happy to share other details, but just to explain what this is, it's on the left side of the screen is Clemson Park. The right side of the screen is Frontage Road. And you can see the Methodist Church there, kind of the, the center bottom. And so the, this, this trail would go through the woods and trying to, we've been working with the city parks, um, horticulturists to, to disturb as few trees as possible. There's already gonna be a few loss of trees, but it's trying to be a forested type trail that goes through that, that wooded area and then along the creek and then back up to Frontage Road. That's what this part of the path is. This is on frontage road. So this, this is gonna be that, I was telling you about uh, reducing the lane size on frontage road and creating a little bit more of a protected path along frontage road. And then this goes back to the, the top of the screen here. These are all you know survey drawings, but the East Clemson Baptist properties on the, the top of the screen and where that kind of red area is, is what the, the requested easement from East Clemson Baptist Church. And I believe they're meeting on this to approve it or, or have it or not uh, tomorrow. If, or sometime this week. This is what uh, Ripple, just a drawing of what Ripple View and Brook Street would look like. So you can see the same road width, not changing the road at all, but having some signage and having maybe some stamps with the Green Crescent Trail on it, having some uh, signs on the side of the road, some directional signage saying this is, you know, this many miles to this place, um, and then having that be within the neighborhood there. And then finally, this is Gateway Park, and this is my beautiful artistic rendition right before this presentation. But um, this green line is probably, there's some existing sidewalks there, but anticipating that this is gonna be a popular connection, if you have people walking, pushing a stroller, or just in the normal sidewalks, we the city staff thinks we probably need to have a separate path mm -hmm. through Gateway Park as well. So that's something that'll, not, where my green line is somewhere in there, will be a connection from Brook Street here at the bottom up to, the Vineyard Road at Highway 93, right next to the First Citizens Bank. That's going to be the termination, the, the end point of this phase one. So any questions on that, y'all? I've done a lot of talking on it, but happy to scroll back through if you had any questions on this phase one piece. Is the um, trail behind the Methodist Church, I think it said concrete, it's a concrete trail? I believe it will be concrete, yes. 12-foot multi-use concrete trail. And this is beyond my pay grade on what I'm that know about surfaces, but from in it, there, there's always the decision between asphalt and um, concrete. And I believe in some of these areas that are prone to flooding, 
my, this, at least what I was told was that some of the concrete construction was going to be lower maintenance or lo longer lasting, but that's, that's my layman's understanding of it. Maybe somebody knows better than I do on that. I have a, I have a question about that, Chad. Yeah, um, go ahead, Meg. We have, uh, and I've suggested this somewhere along the line in some email thing or something, but um, my husband, Joey, and I, we walk on the um, trail behind Clemson Elementary a lot. And we mm -hmm. thought that might be a good thing to incorporate that as sort of a side trail right. to the main trail that's right there running by, by Clemson Elementary. I don't know who, I think probably Clemson Elementary owns that land. I'm not sure, but are you familiar with that trail? Are you talking about like the nature trails, like behind the playgrounds at yes. Elementary? Was, yeah, right. the Boy Scouts created. And, mm -hmm. um, it's a great little trail. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, maybe some other people who know, if I don't know the right answer on that, I believe that is all South Carolina or the Pickens County School District property. Mm -hmm. Ins Inslee, Inslee might know some of that as well, but is that um, is that available I for public? On that. Okay. I, I love that idea though. And, and Meg, it, from our standpoint, what we can do is just sometimes we just try to bring ask questions and bring ideas up. And um, Clemson Elementary School has been very supportive as a partner along the way for a lot in a lot of different ways. So I can just make a note and talk to them about that because I see I see that I, I walk on it as well. And there's I always see people in the public walking on it. But yeah. it'd be nice nice to find out what their thoughts are on that and what's allowed, what's not allowed. Yeah, it's a really nice trail and it's got signage, you know, describing the plants and. Mm -hmm. They are kept up real well sometimes, yeah. but it's 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 great little trail. Yep, that's another one of those examples of just using what we already have. You know, highlighting what we already have, and somebody right. moves to the, moves to the area that they know that's even there if they live a quarter mile away from it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks, Meg. I'll I'll ask about that. On that same side, another possible extension. This is Eunice. Is the um, the route, you know, how Clemson Elementary connects to Ashley Estates and Ashley Estates connects fairly easily to Lowe's. So you could park at Lowe's on Issaquina and get to the trail from there. There's a trail on um, Issaquina. But my question was, um, what about the other side? Where would the parking be at Gateway Park? Okay, let me go back to that. Well, I'm here on the map, here we go. A um, couple ideas, and I'm glad Ansley's on the call because <laughs> there, there's no, there is no good parking at Gateway Park at the moment. Um, maybe one, one future idea that I think has definite has potential that I'm going to get to in a second is this connection back to the university and the South Carolina Botanical Garden. We really hope this, like, can you park at the Botanical Garden and get on the Green Crescent Trail? Like, that's been a big, important goal to have because that's just already a really popular local location and there's a lot of parking there. So that's one answer, Eunice, um, but that connection has to be made for this phase one, you know, is, is there potential for partnership? This is just, I'm not saying this is a, a done deal or anything, but I'm just, can we, is there partnerships with local churches? Is that possible? I don't know for a citizen's bank, I, you know, those are, I think there's gotta be some kind of partnership because there's not a lot of room inside the park and there's, there's no parking inside the park. So that's an open question, Eunice. I'd love to I'd love to pursue that more with maybe clips of Presbyterian church to see their opinion on that, their thoughts, but that's beyond what we've accomplished at this point. Well, it is very close to the art center and they have a parking lot, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. that's another possibility. Yeah. And so this yellow line here is just showing you that other route to the art center African-American museum. And so this, this is one of the, we hope to be kind of the next project that we can explore. Is this possible? Could we do this? Could the community is this, does it make sense? We don't want to presume that yet. Like this is just for now, just like a, an idea, but it, it, was, it would be, it could make sense just from a connection standpoint If our goal is to connect important locations culturally in the community. It's pretty close, you know, and there's not, there's missing sidewalks on Butler street and Kelly road. There's not, you know, kind of intermittent there. I've tried to walk up and down it, you know, some of it, some of it's buried by leaves, some of it's non-existent. So Definitely a lot of improvement needs to be happening, even just from a sidewalk standpoint. Can we just get better sidewalks and maybe have, uh, you know, something for temporarily for biking, perhaps just on the street or something, but that's an idea. Any other thoughts, comments on phase one? Happy to scroll back around to look at some of this other stuff. Andy, you got anything? 
I got Andy silent. That's not, come on. <laughs> you know, my only concern, and it's been from the start, Chad, is uh, people willing to use, I think everything's great around the Methodist church. Um, I love the way that goes around our church. Um, I think my only concern is, is that without widening ripple view and down through there, I think people are going to be afraid to use ripple view. I know there's not a lot of cars on there mm-hmm. and I hate to be negative, but yeah. I just, I know that road's not used much. And that's the one that goes in front of Brian Frazier's down to Mickey Plowler's down through there. Correct. I mean, I'd just love to see something that we could do there to just make it more friendly, you okay. know, other than putting stamp in the concrete or stamping the, you know, that stuff. So that's the only thing I've got. I mean, everything else looks great to me. Yeah. No, fair, fair enough. I think some of these puzzle pieces have been like, what, what would be the hundred percent best thing to do? And what would be the one we can actually actually accomplish in the short run? That's been part of the, the answer there, but in the future, even looking at frontage road, you know, could we, if, if we can do entire frontage road and get that done at some point with a better side lane that's protected, that's a pretty close connection to highway 93 there. And then once we get highway 93 done, so a lot of this could kind of start coming together and maybe take some pressure off of that one and may give it some alternatives pretty soon. See, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but on football games Saturday, sometimes I go down ripple view all the way to Brooks right there behind the, Presbyterian Church and I actually cut through up the little hill right there <laughs> and I go um, on some sidewalks through Gateway Park and then get up to 93 and go in that way on football Saturdays don't tell anybody any <laughs> you guys want that is a good little path right there that you can cut through right behind the Presbyterian Church mm-hmm. exactly it's, it's, it's the crow flies is it's one of your closest connections to get through there all right. Well, I see a couple other new people came on the call too. If y'all have any questions or comments, we're just going through some of their current projects. So I think I'll keep going here. If y'all just feel free to, to jump in if you have any other thoughts or comments, but I spent a bunch of time going in the weeds on this kind of phase one in Clemson, because this is the one we've been working on for a while. It's been hung up, you know, in some of the easement stuff and just some of the speed of getting easements done in the city, I guess, as you could say, it's just been slow, but um, we're kind of itching to get this. I'm hopefully I'm optimistic that we could, and then maybe in the next month or so, we'll be getting some bids on this project. We'll see. This is Angela. I'll be happy to do what I can to help with that link behind the Presbyterian church. Uh, We do have a field back there that I think we could figure out a way to let you run through that, through it. That's the, I'm looking at it right now here on the screen. Are we yeah. is that showing up for you? Um, it's not showing up uh, far enough back. See, we okay. own two houses back behind uh, the church on Vineyard Road. Okay. I'm going to go back to the map here, Inslee, so I know what we're looking at. Okay. Back here in this direction, you mean? Or? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. It's taking me a moment to... Oh, yeah, now I see. Yeah. uh, Yeah, the the, at least one of the houses is showing back there, back there uh, at the bottom of the screen. Okay. I zoom in in the right spot there. Yeah. On Vineyard Road. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So we need, need, I I will make a note to follow up, Inslee, on that as well because. That would be another alternative. Okay. My notes there. All right. All right. So I'm back to this. The presentation is that. Sh- let's I'm gonna keep on talking about some of the other other parts of it. So I've mentioned that the university and the botanical gardens was a key component. That one of the reasons we, out of all the puzzle pieces on the board, chose this one in addition to just trying to be feasible financially was this potential connection back to the university and to the botanical gardens as well. And so that we've had conversations for a long time with the university, but finally in the last year, there's a project that is a perimeter road widening project, which is a, you know, an enormous project financially, but we've been trying to get our foot in the door to make sure something with a green crescent trail was incorporated into that. And I think some positive news on that is that we think it will be, um, and that they're going to be extending part of that project to, this is my little picture of a map that I took that they, they showed me. So I'm, uh, but th- this connection here at the top is gateway park. So if you took a lot top left of this picture, 
um, kind of Presbyterian church that Inslee was just talking about here at the top as well. But one, the idea for now is that they, the university is funding a um, feasibility engineering design of this route here right now and then getting a cost estimate to, to build it. And it would start at wherever the phase one for the city of Clemson ends and then connects through this parking lot where all the solar panels will just put in uh, this commuter parking lot and then connecting back to the crosswalk that goes across the street to perimeter road. And so that's the kind of first, first piece and perimeter road. I haven't seen any designs of this. I don't know that this public or other people have seen it, but there's supposed to be a green crescent trail type trail, like a 10 or 12 foot wide path on the side of perimeter road as well. And I don't, you know, I don't know how far that's going. I know it's going as far as the botanical gardens, but on the right side of the road, um, if you're look if you're going down perimeter from Highway 76, it's supposed to be on the right side, and so that would this this red line here would connect to that new path whenever they they create the widening of perimeter road, and so that's where you would take that path. if you wanted to go to the botanical gardens or come from the botanical gardens, you would go take that path to the botanical gardens and then cross into their main entrance for now. Um, we've talked about trying to get us some other entrances of the botanical gardens, but with them widening the road to a four lane road now, you got to pick your locations where there's a, a crosswalk where there's a stoplight. And I think they're going to make a, a stoplight in front of the botanical gardens to, to make that a more accessible location. So the design and engineering has begun on that project. How much is that going to cost? And will the university fund that piece? I'm optimistic they will, but that's still kind of the, the up in the air that we're following up with their, their university planning department and just making sure we're kind of keeping in the loop on that, but that's, that's where that is. All right, any thoughts or questions? I'm gonna skip the central, and go, go to talk about that next, unless y'all have any other comments on that. Dad, this is uh, Sue Road. I did just wanna add one comment that uh, this would be a fantastic uh, modification of my current uh, route that I ride to work uh, on my bike. Uh, I go from Patrick Square, across through Camelot, across the bridge, up through the downs, and then I actually turn right on Berkeley and uh, I, I don't remember the name of the road. I go up the road a little ways and then turn left. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little dodgy because there's only a bike path on one side. So I debate sometimes whether I ride the wrong way against traffic up the bike lane or mm -hmm. try to make a cross. Uh, but then I go through uh, the older neighborhood there, the uh, come out on Pendleton Road. Right. And that's where it gets a little scary because uh, it's yes. hard to find a, a way to get to that light that's right there at the bottom on that cross at that crosswalk. And correct. You're talking about right here. Right here. There. Yeah. 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 Are there any plans to um redo that intersection where Pendleton Road comes into 76 there, that horrible, dangerous intersection? Oh, it's, yeah. it is horrible. Yeah. Yes. I'll tell you what I've heard, and we've had we've had meetings with the university, which has been great because five years ago we didn't didn't have those. But um, the conversations have been that this route is under planning. That's easier to do in the short run. The one I just showed you from phase yeah. one to perimeter. That this other one is acknowledging that they've acknowledged it's not desirable, not ideal, and needs to be fixed. But there's a bigger project of potentially reorienting that intersection, which or may, maybe having to move some things and work with the DOT to do that. It's just kind of a mess from a car standpoint as well. Yeah. And so we're going to, we're going to keep our group in terms of just keep meeting and asking about this. Cause this route right here is really important too, from Pendleton. Uh, I'm, I'm with you, Sue. I, I do this when I go to campus, I go on Rock Creek road and then come right, right here and do that same thing. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, for people, like if you're coming from Columbo's pizza or this direction on Pendleton road, you know, the sidewalk ends in the city. So then, and then you have a, you have a little gate here where the university is and you get pushed into the road and, you know, it's just a really dangerous, un uninviting spot for pedestrians and for bicyclists right here. Yeah. And so th this is a longer term project, Kathy, I think, you know, what does that mean long term? I don't, I don't know, but we're going to keep it, keep bringing it up to the university and maybe get that one just like this other one, just keep, keep putting it up there. You know, we, in the joint city university advisory board is a really good, I think, avenue for that to keep bringing this part up because the green crescent trail is a, one of the goals of the 
the Joint City University Advisory Board. There, last year, the, the, that whole group worked on a series of goals around the community for things that the, the city and the university could partner on. And the Green Crescent Trail was one of the top, top uh, goals. So this is a specific project within that bigger kind of idea to keep this one, keep this one going. Oh, that's great to hear. Yay. So uh, timing wise, but always be, always be, I'm learning to be uh, cautious on the timing of any of these things, you know, it could be slowly moving towards a, a 10 year solution, or if we really push it hard. And I, that's why this public meeting, right? Just to, this, this information needs to be put with all of you as well, so that it's not just sitting in a few people's heads and we can all work together to try to move these projects forward, because that's really, it's just, it's just a people thing. It's just people talking to people and making sure it's important to other people. So thank you for bringing that up, Sue. You bet. All right, so there's that university connection. I'm excited about that one because that would be add on to what the city's doing. Let, let's let's talk about Central and SWU. This has been a long time project that the town of Central staff have been worked really hard on. We've helped out a lot as well. This would be at about a mile path along the side of Highway 93. It starts in downtown Central and goes to Southern Wesleyan University. And it would start there at the caboose in downtown Central, like the one, the big, the one stoplight there. Um, and then it would continue on. I'll show you on the map what that looks like, but something like this walking, biking path. And it would end up um, the current, this current project right at the edge of Southern Wesleyan University's property. We're hoping, I'm as conversations with the city, town of Central, I'm hoping we can do some kind of temporary connection even on the SWU property. There's, a, there's plenty of space within the athletic department there. And I think they have some plans within the university, but even having like a, um, gravel quarry dust kind of path along some of their property to, to continue this trail even when we build it um, is, is a goal to try to get to the center of SWOO's campus to try to get to the SWOO mountain biking trails which if you haven't been there those are really nice and even you don't have to be a professional mountain biker to use these they're really accessible so definitely highly look that up on google if you haven't been over there yet you can hike on it too we go out there and walk and or, or bike on it um, but this is this is not a great map, but this is what, what it looks like from on the left side here is downtown Central, Werner Street, Bank Street, Broad Street there. So it start right there where the, the baseball field is, the football field, and then takes a little, a little zigzag at one point to go around some difficult easement areas and then comes back onto Highway 93 and continues right to the edge of the Southern Wesleyan University property. So here's a long list of work we've been done that the city and we have been doing on funding on this one. You know, the town of Central Small has been always has been super supportive. This is I mean, the, from the very beginning when we first started in 2016 doing this feasibility study. It was the town of Central who was just jumping on it first, like let's do this. How do we do this? But you know the the funding of it's been this is a big project and um, to to take off to bite off on the first one. And so the town of Central applied for a what's called a transportation alternatives grant a couple of years ago, and it was awarded the full amount. So that's a, that was a big deal so for, for that year. Usually they split it up between multiple towns. The town central got the entire fund for that year, 643,000. There's a $500,000 Appalachian Council of Governments grant that the city got after that. Uh, also applied for a South Carolina Parks and Recreation grant for $100,000. Recently, thank you, Inslee and Pickens County Council. There was a $30,000 allocation from the uh, accommodations tax from Pickens County. And then there was also, I helped apply for um, a South Carolina or National Heritage Corridor grant for $25,000 that we were awarded and uh, in this, this year as well. We're also been doing private fundraising. We raised $20,000, our Friends of the Green Crescent group did from private donors. And then we're working on, hasn't, ink has not been <laughs> written on this one yet, but we have kind of a working agreement, verbal agreement with ANMED to do a central trail sponsorship for $50,000 on this portion of the trail. And maybe in the future, we're optimistic, but there maybe there's a larger uh, sponsorship for the entire thing down the road from ANMED. Um, so that's, so there's been a lot of over $1.4 million in fundraising, including the town of central's money. That's the good news. The challenging news re recently has been just this being uh, the South Carolina D department of transportation is administering or is implementing this construction of this and we'll do the engineering as well. And there's also uh, Greenville Pickens area transportation studies where some of that money came from through the transportation alternatives grant. So there's some administrators there who've been looking and trying to make sure there's just some issues on amount of allocation of matching funds. For example, 
we thought the hundred thousand dollars from the South Carolina PRT was a local uh, local funds, South Carolina funds, but it's actually federal money. And so there's, there might have to be some reorienting some or maybe splitting up part of this project into two pieces that they're reviewing that right now to see how can we get the puzzle pieces of the funding to work. The funding is there, but we one of those solutions may need, may need that we may need to increase some of the match. And so we're talking to the, the town of Central about how can we do that? One of those might be, again, Representative Carter. Um, this is where some of the General Assembly money could help um, for the town of Central to get this one off the ground. And then also the town of Central increasing potentially some of their, their funding of it as well. So this is a, a funding DOT um, just delay basically. And when's that gonna start? Um, I was hoping three or four months ago this would start, but this is where if we get an agreement with um, ANMED in the next week or so, which we're hoping, if we get some of this worked out with a matching fund funding in the next couple of weeks, could we turn all this money over to the DOT in the next month or two and get started and then maybe start construction in 2022? Because it's not going to be fast with a, the DOT project. So that's what we're looking at for the, the Highway 93 and Central kind of corridor. Any questions, feedback on that one, thoughts? This is going to be a game changer for the town of Central. It's really going to be a neat, a neat connection, a neat trail. Um, this has been a stretch, you know, to get all this done, but it's it's going to be it's going to be a big deal once it's done. I, I think similar to Travelers Rest, to the way that impact was on the town of Travelers Rest, will be similar for Central. That's my my prediction. All right, I want to go through and this. I won't go in as much detail on each of these, but just so you'll know, you know, what are we as a group, our our board and the people we're talking to, the, the towns, our partners in the in the community. What are some of the next projects? Because as I started this conversation tonight, there are a lot of puzzle pieces that could be the next things. And they, things might change here in the next year or two if opportunities arise, if different funding sources arise. But this is what we're, we're trying to add to the connections we already showed you tonight. So the things that get implemented this year, we're hoping to add to those and make those even better and add like a network effect where you just keep connecting it. So one of those that we think is a relatively low hanging fruit um, is to do on Berkeley Drive, so where you were talking about riding your bike, Sue, on the left side of the road there, this, the, the bigger picture is to make that a much better improvement. But in the short run, can we do something lower cost by painting some of that existing bike lane, it's a visible color that people know that's supposed to be used by walkers and bikers? Can we put some protective bollards or barriers between the road and that lane? And then potentially also do some storm drain improvement. I'm I'm one of the I'm the lucky guy who ran into one of those storm drains with my bike and broke my collarbone. So uh, I can tell you how that works. Um, better me than a, than a kid doing that, right? So, um, but that, this is, go ahead, Kathy. All right, just, it, uh, that's a, a South Carolina um, road, right? Not, not a city road. Is that it correct? is. This is a, the, almost all of these that we're working on are South Carolina Department of Transportation roads. So Berkeley Drive is is all, all permits would have to, and all decisions finally would have to go through the, the Department of Transportation. And I can tell you that our initial conversations, us putting bollards on the road, slowing cars down is not is not the first thing that they said, yeah, jumping for joy that they wanted to do. But this is the but this is the kind of thing we need to advocate for. We the having barriers on the road, number one, protects these kids and people walking up and down the street and biking. It also slows cars down. The speed limit is 35, but having a little bit narrower feel for the road is just going to, you know, people don't want to run into those. And so they're going to slow down a little bit as well. So this is the, this is the kind of working, this is the route. So Ashley Deering up to the end of phase one up there at the intersection of Frontage Road and Berkeley Drive would be the, the next steps for this. Chad, I'm surprised there's something about a three-way stop there at uh, Berkeley Drive and and uh frontage like a can we work on a stop like there man we have re we've requested this this is another dot this here's my education on the dot over the last two years is that we've asked multiple times went through the city police went through the city uh engineering department saying can you put either improvements there like a flashing light a three-way stop something they they came out and did traffic studies counted cars and said no stop signs not, none of that we had to push super, super hard. And this was just us showing them that kids almost got hit by cars going to the butt to the school in the morning to get that little crosswalk and that, that the one little kind of post in the middle of the road there. That was not something they easily approved. Just kind of telling you how the, this is working. 
but I, but these are the kind of things I think the reason we should exist, you know, like we, if we can call our state reps, we can call our, you know, th these are the kind of projects that they're, they're, I'm, I'm going to speak like my little, my, my soapbox opinions for the moment that um, these are community, local community roads that are being, they're, they're state, uh, there's highway kind of standards being applied to, to local state roads. You know, they're engineering them like, like they're a road that needs to go 55 miles per hour. And so cars feel like they can go 55 miles per hour and they're, they're applying standards there. And so I, I think that's a conversation we need to keep having. And there are definitely receptive people that South Carolina DOT is not all, you know, pushing back against this. But I think if we can, through the city, through our state reps, through our county people say, these are projects where it's really inhibiting us from getting, getting our network together, a pedestrian bike network, can we make those kind of changes? It's just, it's been a little bit of an uphill battle so far. Stepping off the soapbox, back down. All right. <laughs> All right, so that's that's one Berkeley Drive connector. The next thing that would connect to that is the Nettles. Call it, we're calling it the Nettles connector, but it would connect Nettles Park to Ashley Deering Road. This would be one of those just beautiful off the road woods and riverside type paths. Uh, that would connect two parks. It would also require some South Carolina DOT road crossings. Our city engineers have started talking to them about that and whether they would or wouldn't approve it. And there's some good signs early on that we could do that. There's also several private easements that we'd have to go across and I'm one of those, so I'm willing to do it. Um, but then uh, that we've talked to some of the other property owners and so far looks pretty good. There's some more details that have to happen. So this, this map you can see on the left side is what I, we just looked at Berkeley drive. Here's uh, Issaquina trail kind of going through the center of this map. And this, these lines could change as things come together. But the idea is that, one option is having a path along the side of this Aquina Trail, right in front of Delwood, <laughs> uh, Kathy, you know, that, that road um, right next to Kathy's house. Um, but, and then taking a right, this is where the private property comes in. Uh, I have a property there that I'm willing to give an easement for and to get over to a sewer easement along 18 Mile Creek. So this was the tough connection. Just for years, we've been trying to think about how can we do this? How can we get across here? But this, this, is the, this corridor gets us over to Nettles Park Road, Nettles Road, and then probably going underneath that bridge there, having to do some improvements. I don't know if you've been on the Swamp Rabbit or some of those other trails, they have times where you can go underneath a big, you know, big bridge. So you'd go underneath there. And then the question would be that kind of there's two options there. One option is to have another pedestrian bridge go across the creek and kind of be a gateway into Nettles Park. So you would just go right down into where the baseball fields are there in Nettles Park. And that would be kind of a pedestrian bike entrance into the park and then connect into everything that's going on inside of Nettles Park. So if you're playing baseball, if you're a parent uh, watching practice and you want to take a jog or a bike ride, or if you're just using Nettles Park at the playground, whatever reason, it would just connect you right into that heart of the park right there. That's one idea and probably the leading to idea at the moment. The other idea is that you could continue going along the sewer easement here all the way to the Patrick Square Bridge um, that's already in existence. The benefit of that is you don't have to build another bridge. The negative is there's 11 property owners. You have to get 11 easements there as well. Um, there's also um, the issue of, you know, just not being able to get into the park as quickly. So is it a little bit harder to get kind of people access to the trail? So this just might be a little more usable to be coming in the park this way. So this is this is a bigger project. This you know I'm these are my rough unengineered un, non engineering kind of guesses, but probably a, a million and a half project one one to one and a half million dollar project that we want to apply for easements on. So these are I mean, for uh, grants. So can we apply for grants? Can we use some city money as matching? Can we go to talk to the county and get some help for the county for some of this this project? Um, perhaps some future state money. Like th th this is be one of those kind of uh, Hallmark kind of projects would be a really nice connection that would connect Patrick Square, Nettles Park, over to the other side of the city, uh, Berkeley Drive, Toddy's Place, Ashley Deering, back up to Clemson Elementary. So it'd be a really, really important connection. Status on that. Um, the next step is to start funding designing and engineering. So getting a survey on that route, getting a firm or the you know, an engineering firm to do like more detailed study of the route saying this, 
this is how much this would cost, this is how wide the path would be, all those specs that we saw in that other route. That's the next step. And so there is some money from the city of Clemson and the 21, 22 budget for the Green Crescent Trail. So can we start using some of that to fund it? That's a request I've put in on that behalf of the Friends of the Green Crescent Trail to the city to see if we can begin doing some funding, getting, getting that shovel ready so that we can then go apply for grants and for other money. And then we've had some preliminary conversations with private owners on that, that property on that, along that route. Um, but as that fun, uh, design engineering comes together, can we then get official easements on that property? So that's that one. We're about done here. We're about eight o'clock. I got to wrap this up. Um, any questions, thoughts on that one? That's kind of an interesting one, but any suggestions, questions or anything else? I like, I would like for the blue one to be a, a, a both. Hmm. I want the proposed route and. Right. I agree. I would love them both as well. And I think as this comes together, this has been a, a choice of which one would we have. If we, funding is limited. <laughs> and so like if we, if we get one done, there's always trade-offs, which one, and that's why I'm putting this out to all of you in the public. You know, we, we need to think about it and talk about it and discuss it, but both would be great. It would be the more connections we can make, the better. And I think over the long run is, is each one of these takes and people use it. And we see it is, it's going to be easier to do the next one and the next one and the next one. All right, um, Highway 93, Here, here's another big one. This, this was at the top of our list from the very beginning when we did the feasibility study in 2016. But this is one of, one of those like downtown College Avenue, which I'm also gonna talk about now, that are complex and they're tricky and they're, another, they're both South Carolina Department of Transportation roads. They have multiple uses, but this has always been our radar. Can, as a first phase of Highway 93, this, this is a road that people go fast on that has divided the community. So a lot of our traditional African-American communities, neighborhoods were basically cut in half by Highway 93 at one point. And there, there need to be more crosswalks. There need to be people like connecting on either side of 93. It also is not easy to bike as we talked about earlier. It's not easy to, or safe to do. It's not perceived as safe. So at a minimum, kind of the first phase, one thing we would like to do is can we, uh, in our feasibility study, they measured the road and just saw that a lot of these lanes are oversized from what the minimum needs to be, even by South Carolina DOT standards. So could the, the least expensive thing to do would be to restripe the road, get those lanes a little bit right sized to where it's a narrower lanes so that we, so that we have some room to then expand bike lanes and add some protection on, on either side. That's a kind of a first level, first phase potential project there. Later phases though, that we, I'm gonna show you pictures of, could we also have a side path, like a 10 to 12 foot wide side path along 93, basically like a walking, biking highway all the way from Clemson University to Central to Southern Wesleyan University. That's the, the, the bigger, more expensive idea, but also the kind of more, more of a game changer idea. And I, I, I compare that to, if you are looking at the plans of the, the Swamp Rabbit Extension right now in Greenville that goes down Lawrence Road, I think that this could be like that. It could be where you're going right in a, a really high, a commercial area where lots of, it's gonna be a future development area. So what, what could that look like having this be not only a, a, a highway for roads, but also a really emphasizing pedestrian bikes. Here's a cross section from our feasibility study that just shows you what I'm talking about. In the widest spot there, kind of near Gateway Park is 72 feet wide. This is the top is what it looks like right now. And with some restriping, like there's an 18 foot wide middle lane in some spots, turn lane. If that were narrower, 11, and you had each of the lanes be 11 feet, you would increase the, the width so that you could have a two foot wide buffer area and a seven and a half foot bike lane, which is much more comfortable. Right now it's probably two or three feet in some spots, maybe four feet in other spots with no protection. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about and we're talking about. Here's a picture, as you go farther down 93, it gets, there's, there's varying widths, um, but here's a spot out by, uh, what's the name of this road? Um, it's by the, the reserve, it used to be the reserve at Clemson, right past Issaquina Trail on the right. Um, Vickery Drive, I believe is the name of it. Um, and so they're just improving crosswalks. Right now the crosswalks are not like this. They're not real visible. They're not easy to get across, don't feel safe. And so having better crosswalks, but also this is what that side path could look like all the way to Central. So where's this project, where, what's the next step? It's on the Greenville Pickens Area Transportation Studies 2022 project list. So um, 
Mayor Halfacre is on this committee, this Rainbow Pickens Area Transportation Study Committee. So he's on this project. He's trying to follow up and try to figure out, is this funded? It says we have $150,000 to fund a feasibility study of Highway 93 in 2022, but is it is it funded? And if so, when is it scheduled? Who's in charge of it? So this is a, a Mayor Halfacre project that he's really um, trying to work on and hopefully we can make some progress on this. All right, last one, then I'll wrap, wrap it up because I know this is about, supposed to be an hour tonight. Uh, this is downtown College Avenue, and th there was a downtown um, feasibility study or downtown corridor study done, I don't know how many years ago now, maybe five years ago or longer, maybe it's three or four years ago. Um, but this is just a, this is one image from that downtown corridor study. And if you email me afterwards, if you've never seen this, I, I couldn't find it on the website, on Clemson's website, but I have, I have a copy of it on the Green Crescent Trail site. So if you email me, Chad Carson one at gmail.com. I'm happy to send you a copy of this as well. The, the downtown st study calls for a number of things, but it's basically widening sidewalks, creating more of a pedestrian feel downtown, having bike lanes. Um, in, a, in a first phase, kind of like Highway 93, could we do something where we reduce some of the lane sizes and increase protected bike lanes? Because this is a really important corridor for just bikers going to and from the university, commuters. But then later phases, phases, more expensive phases, having wider sidewalks, street trees, and some major improvements. There's a lot of utility improvements have to be done downtown, according to some of the city staff. So it makes, it makes this a pretty expensive project. But this is what that part of that could look like down there at the bottom of the hill where they're building the new, I guess it's called the Bixby, the new apartment complex down there. That's what this road could look like if you um, took away one of the lanes, turned it into parking, and then used some of that space for um, for bike lanes going up and down College Avenue. So what's right, is stuck right now? This project's stuck. <laughs> um, why is it stuck? My, one of my understandings is just me talking to people down in the city. There, there's, I think, a fear probably from a lot of the downtown business owners of there's a perception of not enough parking downtown. So if you take away 28 spaces what, what this downtown corridor plan called for a lot of them are going to be further down the road kind of at the bottom of the hill near the old astro but if you take away spaces is that kind of exacerbating that problem you know that's that's one concern and then um it's a pretty big it's a big cost estimate multiple millions to to try to do this project so my my question kind of to y'all just if y'all have conversations with other people about this <clears throat> is can we rekindle this conversation about the downtown corridor can we do it, maybe revise that existing plan to make it like in phases, do something a little bit easier on the first phase. But this is, that's where this one is. This is uh, not going anywhere at the moment for what I know. Although that there's some, you know, a lot of things, discussions happening around Upper College Avenue and what's that gonna look like and the Clemson Next pro pro project. So I'm hoping that we as the Friends of the Green Crescent Trail can keep this conversation going in that process to make sure that pedestrian bike infrastructure is kind of incorporated into all that. Back to the big picture, this is where we started tonight, just the big corridors, the big puzzle pieces. All the, these are all just small, I mean, the projects we're working on right now, <clears throat> but the hope is that they all fit into this bigger network over the next 10, 20 years, where eventually the whole area has a, a larger alternative transportation network that you can use for recreation, that people can use for transportation, and that's, that's where we're trying to go. That's all I had, y'all. That's 810. Thank you. Thank you for your time. If I can answer any questions or go back to anything, happy to go back and, and do the, and I'll, I'll be happy to send you a copy of the slides that I made on, on these. So you can also send me an email, chadcarson1 at gmail.com and be happy to send you those as well. Any comments, questions? How'd I do? Good job, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is GPATS and what do they do and what kind of money do they control? I'll give my answer. If there's <laughs> anybody else knows better than me. The, um, my understanding is that all transportation projects that use federal money, but maybe it's other money besides federal money, have to go through or allocated through this, this group called the Greenville Pickens Area Transportation Study. And there's, there's a, another group for Anderson. There's another group, I believe, for other parts of the state. And the decisions are made by a um, committee that includes local mayors, local staff members. And so a lot of the money, both for road projects, but also for these alternative transportation projects go, go through G, uh, GPATS. Okay. So one of the challenges we have in Clemson though, is that we're kind of the, 
the and Clemson part of the <laughs> pick and, Greenville Pickens, you know, we're in the same funding as <clears throat> Woodruff Road, as downtown Greenville. So like, you know, the, we say, hey, we're in Clemson, look at us over here. And I think it, I think it gets lost a little bit sometimes, but hopefully we can do better with that. Anybody else know any better than I do? Is that a Jerry or Representative Carver? I don't know if I portrayed that well. Maybe you know a little bit more than I do about, about that. Anybody else is there? Thank you. Thank you, Chad. That was real interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead, Representative Carter. I was just going to say I can't add add to that. I yeah, uh, I know that they are responsible for federal funds that come through that area and it's limited, but I really don't know much else about the organization. Okay. Y'all, like I said, Mayor Halfacre is really getting into that one. That is, is trying to step up and make sure we're some of these projects specifically are continuing to move up the list at GPAT. So, but I know they're also, I mean, it's a really, there's a lot of funding that comes through there. So not only the transportation alternatives grant that we, that Central got, but also there's something called guide share, which is another source of money. And, um, and that gets allocated like a lot of the highway 153 project and easily that happened where they put in big, big traffic circles and some bike lanes. It was a major project in, in Pickens County with a lot of that was guide share money through GPATS. So, I, so I, I think Highway 93 project in particular, which is going to be a more expensive one, and then also maybe College Avenue, that's why the, the GPATS kind of angle needs, I think is probably going to be a, an important one for that to actually get some of that funded. Well, I just want to say thanks for your time and the board. This is a vast amount of time. The example of Frontage and Berkeley already took so much of your time and you're looking at many, many intersections. You've invested a lot of time. It's going to be good for our community and for the rest of you. If you want to help Chad and you're not on the board, ask your friends to join the Green Crescent Trail <laughs> for relatively little money. You can become a member and help support this. And as you heard what he said, we've got to have matching funds and the easiest matching funds are the $100 I give it every year, right? If we can get a thousand people to give a hundred dollars a year um, that love this. Um, so talk to your friends, but I'm always running into people who say, what's happening with the Green Crescent Town? I'm like, join, you'll get a newsletter. You'll find mm -hmm. out, you'll get invited to meetings. So tell your friends to join. Thank you, Eunice. I appreciate it. <laughs> Eunice always reminds me to give our website, greencrescenttrail.org, and there's a donate button there. So absolutely, we could, we could use the funds, I promise you. And they're go into a, to matching and or design studies or putting up signs uh, for the around the walkable city signs. They're all going right, right to what we're doing here. Uh, Jerry, you asked about what's, what constitutes a protected bike lane and the ideal, ideal situation would be a completely protected. I'm going to go back to my, my screen here where there's a, there's a big, there's a physical barrier between the, the biker and something else. Yeah. So, that, so this one has a curb and actually like a landscaping area or a raised area where it would be difficult for a, a car to get across that, maybe some trees in the way. Um, these other bollards are another thing that sort of sometimes used. They're basically linear um, poles that, that are just to create a separation between the, the street and the, and the bike lane. But the yeah, idea, just, yeah, I'm sorry. I just ahead. want to make sure you weren't just talking about striping, that that constituted a protected bike lane. No, <clears throat> physical, the idea would be a, a park, like parking spots like this are actually the best. Like if we can have a, a, a row of parking between yeah. the, the road and us, you know, biking, that's the, that's the ideal because then people can't go through the cars, even a, even a curb. I don't know if y'all heard the news in Augusta road in Greenville earlier this year, a lady was, was jogging on the road by Augusta road and somebody a probably drunk driver, but I'm not sure the situation jumped the curb and hit somebody, you know, on Augusta road. So it's, that's, that's the fear, you know, that it's not uncommon, it's uncommon for, for pedestrians and bikers to, especially crossing roads to get hit. Um, but, you know, even that, that's why people rightfully so or perceive it not to feel comfortable on Highway 93 and other places. It's just, it's just right next to cars, right next to buses. It's just not, it's not ideal. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it. And we're, we're going to keep trucking on. We'll have another update. The goal tonight was just to, to put it all out there and be transparent and show you what we're working on. So this, this is it. And I'll, I'll, if you have friends who wanted to see this and couldn't make it, or if you want to watch replay, I'm going to upload this to our YouTube channel. So if you just look on YouTube for Green Crescent Trail, we have a, this will be up there in the next day or so. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks y'all. Good night.
Thank you. Thank you.